Hello, my name is Leo, and welcome to another reading of the Elder Scrolls. Today we're going to be reading the first scroll of Banda... Da... That's, a, that's an R. By... Arkin. Hmm, okay. This one's got lots of red wrappings, so get ready for that shit. What follows is a translation of the first fragment from a series of Valerian scrolls found in three alabaster jars, sealed in a cave. The discoverer was a nomad wanderer, somewhere on the shores of Lake Varid, in the province of Elsewhere. I can neither vouch nor does not deny its authenticity or veracity. Only that the scrolls as such do exist. Read and judge for yourself. Banda, the legend, thief, warlock, shadow master, ruthless assassin, undying adventure, dark god, robber baron, mastermind of nefarious plots. All these things and more are the legendary Banda. He who is called the bandit god. But what is the truth? Banda. The man... Wait, is there a word wrapping there? I'm gonna check. Hang on, let's check. I'll be right back. No, it's not. It's okay. And, uh, the man is a much more simple and complex being. I pen this tale as I slowly die of old age and a mortifying... and a mortifying arrow wound. I cannot decide if the truth will aid to or subtract... or subtract... Blah, blah, blah or subtract from the legend that is Barandar. Nor, if the original Barandar would want the truth to be known. Therefore, I will leave this tale hidden when I am done and gone, and let fate, which was ever Barandar's true master and motivator, decide. I was a child of twelve seasons, when I first met Barandar, orphaned of a slaver raid, during one of the many interprovincial border wars, living by my quick wits, nimble fingers, and the grace of Lady Luck, in the back alleys and byways of my birth city, I had just liberated a loaf of bread and a few small apples from a local street vendor in the bazaar, when the on, on the edge of the city, near the tumbling outer wall, and had withdrawn down an ill-lit alley to feast on my bounty, when I was beset by an older band of my ilk, the older, lazier variety, which were wont to engage in easier and less dangerous art of stealing from the stealers. There were five of the bully boys who had decided they were more deserving of my bounty than I, and, and they were beating me half to death with staves in between bites and laughter at the same time. Lying on the ground, curled up into as tight a ball as I could manage, trying to protect my head and groin, I heard a quiet voice ask if they were not more suited to go down to the wharf and take food from your brother rats, or would you care to try your tricks on game a bit more your size and number? Since my companions had become otherwise engaged with the newcomer, and had Wow, oh, shit, I gotta look this up, hang on, I'm gonna Okay, wow, it's actually not word wrapping, that's how it's written. With the newcomer, and had for the nuns ceased thumping, kicking, and cuffing at me, I looked up to see a dark shadow of boots, cloak, and chainmail, hood leaning against the wall at the end of the alleyway. The others, being what they were, took this as a challenge to their manhood, 
an easy prey to their superior number, with a promise of coin of a realm as added or a coin of the realm as added reward, else the first part would have been overlooked. The leader of my band of playmates. When you say the leader of my band of playmates, you're talking about the five arseholes that beat the shit out of you, right? Yeah. Suggested that the stranger take a leap off the mentioned wharf, unless he wished to join me there when they were done with their evening meal. Having drawn shackles and courage from his underlings, he then proceeded... Oh, here we go. He then proceeded. He then proceeded forward with. Ah, shit. He then proceeded. F oh, God damn it. He then proceeded forward. God damn it, where the hell was that? I was looking right at it. Right. He then proceeded forward with staff at High Port. I'm not quite sure exactly what followed, but within a short space of time, Lead Bully was lying in the dirt with a thrown dagger in his chest. Number two Bully had lost three teeth to a boot, and still carry them in a leather pouch as a keepsake. Right, how'd you find them? And number three Bully was brought short by his own staff, applied forcefully up between his toes. The two big ones. You mean, wait, you mean, like, between his toes on his feet, or you say, the two big ones, you mean, right up to his legs, i.e., right in his dick. Bullies 4 and 5 thought better of the entertainment and departed rapidly for parts unknown. Banda picked me up, dusted me off, and dragged me round to a near tavern, where we shared a meal and a mug. I attempted to thank him for saving my life. How can I ever repay this favour, I asked. His reply was short, to the point, and has driven my actions in life ever since. The proper way to repay a favour is not to. Pass it on instead. Things having not progressed well along the lines of health, wealth and welfare for me, until that point in my life, came upon a sudden change that night. Elena learned, along with many other things, that Bandar had decided to take a direct and immediate interest in me, because my situation reminded him very much of the bad start of his own life that his own life had taken, and the odds he had faced to survive it. On that night, he took me under his wing as a kind of apprentice. He saw to it that I learned weapon craft and stealth, that I learned to read and write. He took me along when he travelled for the next year. I served as messenger, valet, pack meal, lookout, cook, many things. I saw other towns, cities, races, provinces, and broadened my view and knowledge of the world. Far beyond belief, he, th he taught me both morals and cold-hearted ruthlessness, and when and how to apply each as the ethics of the situation require. Okay, hang on. At the end of the year, he gave me a good dagger a, and a decent horse, the three teeth, and leave, nay, command, to make my own way in the world from that day forward, but to remember all I had been given, and to attempt to pass such a gift to another, when and where I should find need and opportunity, that I had done several times. As I assume, he has also you mean, as I assume he had also, whatever, 
and as I hope my various charges have after me, and they theirs. Thus has the legendary Bandar been seen time and again in various lands, in our world at numerous and the same times in days of need. Thus, also in the description, so very hard to obtain and track, for in truth, there have been and continue to be many Bandars in the world. <clears throat> the most valuable lesson he ever taught me was that for evil to triumph required not so much that many bad men to do wrong, as for one good man to fail to do what is right. I've heard that before. Um, we only hope, in a different wording, we only hope that our combined and concentrate. Con what is that one? I'm going to look that one up again. Concatenated, which is like linked together. As for one good man to fail. Okay, sorry. We only hope that our combined and concatenated efforts, which is basically the same word, so it's kind of redundant, have produced enough single men and women that will not fail to do the right thing, regardless of current local morals, laws, religions, creed, or lure of coin of the realm. The legend grows still of the dark avenging blade on the wings of night. What, Batman? Um, that make no sound. Patron saint of the lone wolf, the thousand eyes and ears, the hundred arms, die, die respectful of time or distance, undying master of disguise, man of a thousand faces, shapes and sizes, gentle, rough-edged, gay, stern, all the mystery of the man unknown and undying. Kind of reminds me of, uh, uh, you know, um, Jagan Hagar, but the, the many-faced god kind of thing, kind of. <clears throat> Not a single man nor god at all, but a string of seeds sown upon the land and left to grow into a forest. How to reconcile this truth with the tales of cruelty? and gangs of bandars, or bandits. Some are jealous thieves who take the name only for the cloak of mystery and hope of hiding in its shadow. Others are tales twisted by re to reverse by those justly served by ban bandars, unfitted by technicalities of law and custom. Some are backsliders drawn of the true path by temptation and returning to their old ways. Many are the things that any one Bandar cannot answer for, as others did the deeds at the same in the same name. Some are tales of fishwives made up fishwives? Made up to scare the children into doing what is wanted. Oh, I see. Some are left as part of the mystery that is both cloak and shield to the hidden purpose. Purposes. A case where the fear of the tale serves to save the need of arms or action. But... By and large, the true Bandar is a string of beings taught to act upon what they believe in and stand to take the yoke of needed action upon their own shoulders. Don't fight if you can avoid blood or war. But if you must make war, do so with all your heart and might. Leave it at threats if threats are enough. But never make threats you are unwilling unwilling to carry to conclusion if required. Use all the arts at hand. Be ever kept, but ever keep the true purpose in mind. Stand tall 
but never forget how to bend your knee to help another. Note, the rest of the scrolls are tales and tellings of various parts of the legend. Some are passed from bard to bard, some are the true tales underlying the ballads. These fragments are still to be translated and debated. This fragment, however, contains the kernel of the re relevation and the true source of the questions surrounding the Bandar legend. What say you, reader? For myself, I do not know. But God, your unrelated string of linked souls, has laid out here. I do know that Bandar is a force in our land and lives, and one that gives hope to many that need it, and pours to many I despise. Akan, scribe of Daggerfall, in the year, second era, 24 hours early. Alright, so that was the first scroll of Bandar. The second and third scroll just mm, don't exist, so whatever. Alright, well that's it for today, um, tomorrow we'll be reading another book, and uh, yeah, that's pretty much all there is to it. Uh, but for now, my name is Leo, and I'll see you next time.